And of course, I'm not only talking here in Amsterdam or tomorrow in Maastricht. We publish these studies that on the entire research in international journals, we publish, we present this information at international scientific conferences in the US, in Europe. There is no other research institute in the entire world that publishes more research in international journals, recognized journals, in the area of natural health than our institute. And all of that work is financed by the people we've helped and who now help others. No one else gives us the money. No government, not the EU, which is in the hand of pharmaceutical interests anyway. So when when it was clear that it was not, not a theory, what I had written in 1992, but it was reality, 10 years had passed because we first had to get the money to start this institute. We first had to get the money to get the researchers that can do these experiments. So it, 10 years passed from this concept publication to the first evidence. When the first evidence was there, we immediately went into the largest newspaper in the world, which is the USA Today, highest circulation, highest daily circulation in the world. So on March 8, we took out a full page. They didn't want to publish it. They said, this is, this is, we don't believe this, but we could prove every comma of it. So they finally agreed, their, their legal department, to publish it. And on March 8, 2002, this appeared in the USA Today, and I'm just reading one fact number five. Our research proves that vitamin C, lysine, proline, and specific extracts from, extracts from green tea can inhibit the spread of cancer cells. So since more than four years, the entire medical world and much beyond knows the facts that cancer should no longer be a death verdict. But it took the medical community, the, those leading research institutions in the world, another two years, three years, until they, in September 2005, confirmed this research. This is the National Institutes of Health. This is the largest research institution in the world. A research group from, from the Department of Metabolic Diseases published a paper in a scientific publication in the official journal of the U.S. Um, Academy of Science in September 2005, entitled Vitamin C Selectively Kills Cancer Cells. Again, vitamin C selectively kills cancer cells. A message in a world where cancer treatment was little else than taking a rifle and shooting at a patient with all the little bullets hitting here and there, not differentiating between healthy and cancer cells. All cells were damaged with chemotherapy. And suddenly, a vitamin, natural, available everywhere, kills selectively cancer cells, does no longer affect healthy cells, does no longer lead to hair loss, to bleeding, to swelling, to, to pain, just kills cancer cells. Amazing. You would have expected that in Washington, D.C., the president goes in front of the press and said, this is it. You would have expected that uh, Mr. Balkenende celebrates uh, in Amsterdam, makes a, a big uh, firework and says, all mankind is now helping to eradicate cancer because we found it. We may have to wait 
for a few more winters until this is happening. So what do we learn from that? We learn from that that this publication was not written voluntarily. It was written under the pressure that we had been building up. They could no longer sit there. They had to be jumping on the bandwagon in order to say one day, well, we were there too. But they didn't want to do it. So where are we now? We are here today. As long as mankind exists, there was cancer because we didn't understand the mechanisms. Now we do. Now we have the possibility to largely eliminate this disease for this generation and for future generations. This is today. This is today. And it was not Merck, Pfizer and Roche who created this historic watershed event. And those who pioneered this path were being attacked not only by remote figures on national TV. Some of you may have seen this movie they produced about Dominic where they accused that I killed this child on IRD. They aired it three times. And the producer was this guy, Peter Foss, outgoing director of the Südwestrundfunk. And when we investigated his background, we found that he was the, the media caddy of Helmut Kohl. Wherever Kohl was, this guy was uh, sitting right, by, right behind him. Then we found out that at the time when he produced this, 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 this uh, witch hunt movie, he himself had been investigated for four years for corruption. So there was a special meeting of the supervisory board of IRD where they said, you got to resign. So he made a deal. He said, well, I'm resigning one year earlier voluntarily if you leave me there. There are many more of these stories, and I, the time is not sufficient tonight to touch on them, but this is important. Now that you know, now you decide. Before this evening, you could say, I didn't know. Now you know. Now you have to do something. Either you go out and say, well, okay, it was a nice evening, but it uh, has no consequences for me. That's an option. Or you say, well, I'm informing myself. This was uh, interesting. I'd like to know more. And then if you come to the conclusion that uh, this is what uh, you want to dedicate at least a portion of your life to, then you should talk with others who have already made this decision. Briefly on heart disease. Here too, not asking the right questions has the same detrimental consequences. Why are we getting heart attacks and not nose attacks? Have you ever asked this question? Our pipeline in the body, the blood vessel system, is a hundred, in one body, is a hundred thousand kilometers long. Half of it arteries, half of it veins. We get atherosclerosis, which means half of the pipeline is principally susceptible to this problem, but we don't get it in the other half. Or have you heard about venosclerosis? I haven't. But then there's an industry who says, oh, you've got to lower, you've got you to clean up the water quality. There's too much cholesterol in it. Because cholesterol, they say, is thickening your arteries. Well, what about the veins? A plumber understands that this is complete nonsense. 